Welcome to Automation of the Week. My name is Brian Hayes, and this week, I'm gonna show you how to build out an HTML table with flow that you can then insert into emails. This is really useful if you have related records that you wanna insert into an email for a customer or internally as well. And we're creating this video at the request of one of our viewers, Allison. So thank you, Allison, for the request. And it follows up on an earlier automation video that we created. If you haven't seen that video yet, click the link in the description below so you get a little bit of background and you're not feeling lost. If you have video ideas for us or questions that you'd like us to answer for you, consider becoming one of our members. You can click join beneath this video and we give our members prioritization when we respond to comments and when we take new ideas for new videos like this one. So in the previous video, what we created was an automation that generates an HTML list of different records. This is very useful on its own, but we can take this a step further. Instead of just having an unordered or an ordered list of say the names of contacts related to an account, we can create a table and we can pull in multiple field values for those people. We can have their name and their title and their phone number, you know, or we could do this with opportunities. We could have the name of the opportunity, the close date, the amount, et cetera, or with cases. You can expand this idea to almost any related record within Salesforce. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna modify this flow. So let me start by walking through how the flow works now, and then we'll make the adjustments to have it create an HTML table instead of an HTML list. This is an auto-launched flow. The reason for that is because we could trigger this with other flows in different ways. We could create a scheduled flow to have this run on a regular timeline, or we could create a record-triggered flow to have this run when that record is updated. So auto launch flows are nice. We can have these run as a sub flow and it provides a lot of flexibility in that way. When it runs, it starts with a record ID. That record ID is an account record. We then get all the contacts who have that account ID. We then loop through each of those contacts and we're adding them one by one to an HTML list. We then close that list because in order to have proper HTML, there's an opening tag, and then there's a closing tag, so one at the beginning and the end of the list. And then we finally update the account where we're inserting that HTML into a rich text field, which we could then use as a merge field in an email or even just leave it on the account if that's useful. So what we're gonna do to update this flow is we're going to change these two resources. We're not gonna use the list row and we're not gonna use contact list. Instead, I'll create a variable that is called contact table and then we'll create a text template that is contact row. To do that, click the new resource in the upper left-hand corner, select variable, and this will be our contact table. We want this variable to be a text variable that's gonna store our HTML code that has all of our table data in it. And then for the default value, we wanna start the table off correctly. So to do that, we want the beginning code for an HTML table. And let me show you a resource that's great to reference whenever you're building this out. W3Schools has a lot of useful information. Here you just Google HTML tables, it should pop right up. And you can see what the structure of this table is. We have an opening table tag, and then at the bottom, we have this closing table tag or table element. And then in between it, we have these table row elements. And then we have table header elements here, and this is a little bit different than the subsequent rows. You can see down here, it doesn't say TH, it says TD. This stands for table data, or TH stands for table header. You don't have to use TH. You could skip that, especially if you don't have a table header, but it's generally a good practice, so I'm gonna include this. So what I'm gonna take for our default content is basically this top part here. I want the beginning of the table and that first row, which in this case is a header, and then what we'll do in the loop is we'll add another row, one row at a time, each time it cycles through the loop. And that's where we'll add this, you know, TD table data. You can see here the example content is company, contact, country. We're gonna swap that out for the fields that we care about, whatever those field labels are. And then down here where we actually have the data, this is gonna be a merge field, which we'll get to in a couple minutes. So I'm gonna copy this then come back to our new resource and where we have default value, I'm gonna paste that in here. You can see we've got table, table row, table header, etc. For our actual content, let me change this to first name. 
last name. And then we'll add account. And I'm gonna add another one for phone. So you can see I'm just following the same pattern here where we have an opening table header tag or element and a closing table header element right there. One thing we're gonna wanna add here is some style. We're gonna wanna tell it to have the border be the color black, maybe have the border be two pixels wide, etc. I'm not gonna add that just yet, but just keep that in mind. We'll come back and add that styling later. Depending on how you're gonna use this table, you might not need to add the styling here, uh, or you might wanna add something completely custom. So I'm just gonna show you the bare bones for now, and we'll come back later. Click done. That takes care of our first line, essentially, of our table. And then we have our close list assignment down here. I'm going to change this. We're not going to close the contact list. Instead, we're going to close our contact table. We're not just going to add the closing element for an unordered list. Instead, we're going to make this a table. While we're at it, I'm going to change the label here. Now that says close table. The next thing we're going to want to do is create our text template for our table row. Click new resource, click text template, and we'll call this table row. Make sure you swap this from rich text into plain text. Now we can come back to our HTML tables guide here, and I'm gonna take all the code for one row from the table. Copy that, and we can paste it right in here. So we have the beginning of our table row, and then we have three pieces of table data. Let me increase this a little bit here. But if you recall, we actually have four different columns. We have four different headers. And so we're gonna need another one here. I'll add that. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is delete this filler content here. And we're gonna replace these with merge fields. So if you click insert resource, you can scroll down to this record variable that says current item from loop as it's looping through the contacts. This is the contact that is in the loop right now. If it's got this little arrow on the right, that means you can navigate into that variable and you have additional options. So here we can see that we've got all of these fields from the contact available to us. I'm gonna start with first name by just searching for first. There it is. And it's gonna insert the first name of the current contact that's in the loop. And then I'll do that again for our last name, current item from loop, search for last name, it'll be in here somewhere. And then I think we had account for the third one. So I'm gonna skip that just for a second. The fourth one was phone. So do the same thing here, inserting our phone field. Now for the account, this can be a little bit tricky. If we come back to our current item in the loop, our current contact, you could get the account ID and insert that into the table, but that is literally gonna be the ID of the account. It's gonna be 18 characters that don't mean anything to anyone. So instead what we can do at the top is we can actually navigate to the related account because all contacts should have a lookup to an account. You can see that this lookup is represented with this little arrow on the right-hand side. Click on that and we've now navigated from the current contact to its account and can select any field from that related account, including what we want in this case, the name. Here it is, account name. Just like I mentioned in the previous step, we're gonna wanna come back here and add a little bit of styling, but for now, we'll leave that as is and hit done. Make sure you edit this assignment step to add an HTML row to list. We're gonna change that to add an HTML row to table. And then under our set variable values here, we'll change this from contact list to contact table. And we're gonna to wanna to add not a list row, but a table row and click save. Before we can test this, we have one more thing that we need to do. Come to update account, and instead of taking our contact list and updating the account with it, we're gonna change that to our contact table. There we go, click done, and save. Now let's debug this. I've got the record ID for one of my accounts that has three contacts. I'm gonna paste that into our debug screen here. Looped through our contacts just fine, and it updated the account. If we check the account, we should see a table there. And here you can see it in the lower left-hand corner. It's nice that we have bold for that table header. That happens automatically, depending on how that HTML is rendered. And then beneath it, we have the first name, the last name, the account name. And in this case, I don't think they have any phone numbers, which is probably why that is blank, but it's worth double checking. 
So let's just take a look at one of our contacts here to see if they do have a phone number. Yeah, it looks like none of them do. So probably not the best field to use. Now you'll notice that our table border doesn't really show up, right? It, it's clearly a table in terms of format, but we don't have that black border that you're probably used to seeing with a table. So we can add that by adding some styling. If you come back to W3 Schools, you'll see on the left-hand side, there's a section for table styling. Click on that and it'll give you some insight into the different ways that you can style a table in HTML. First thing we're seeing here is zebra stripes. Scroll down a little bit more. You can see that horizontal dividers is another option. Keep in mind though that this HTML is being rendered in a rich text field. So it's gonna have some limitations. Not everything that works with HTML on a website is gonna work within this rich text field in Salesforce. So keep it simple, basics are good, uh, but you could still experiment. Just know it might not work. Same thing with email. You can insert a lot of HTML into an email, but not all email clients are gonna render it in the way that you'd expect. Let's add some custom styling. So come back to flow, click on resources, and then click on your variable for contact table. So here I'm gonna add the style. You need to add the style arguments within the element. So under, so within table before this closing bracket here, go ahead and write style equals, and then open quotes, close quotes. Now within those quotes, that's where you put the statements for the different styles that you want. I'm just gonna paste this in here for now, but you can see it says border should be one pixel wide and solid. You can also add the color here if you want. And then border collapse is set to collapse. Border collapse is referring to having multiple borders, uh, one around a cell or a row, uh, another one around the table itself. And so instead of having multiple levels of, of borders right next to each other, it collapses them all into one to make it a little bit easier to see. And that's what you'd be used to when you look at a table in Excel. I'm also gonna take this border statement here. So I'll take style all the way over to our first semicolon. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna add it to the table header elements too. Make sure you add that extra quotes to close it. So I'll copy this. Then we can take it to our next table header cell, paste that, paste it again, and paste it again. When it comes to styling, it, it's a bit particular. Make sure that you're not missing a quote, so you're not missing a semicolon or colon. That can cause issues when the system's trying to render your design. Click done. You can also add a statement there for width if you wanted to specify the width of the first column is 50% and the other columns are 15% or something along those lines. Let's do a similar thing now with the table row text template. I'm gonna take that exact same statement that we just copied and I'll paste it here in towards the beginning of each table data element. Style equals quotes, border, colon, one pixel, space, solid, semicolon, close quotes. If you're having trouble seeing the code that's being added to these different lines, just check the description below. We'll have it pasted there for your reference too. With that, go ahead and click save and let's debug this flow again. I'm gonna come back to the Blouse Barn account and copy the account ID from the URL. Now we can debug this, click run. If we come back and check our account, we should see a table now that has borders around it. There we go. First name, last name, account, and phone. Let's change this phone to something else where we have a little bit more data. How about instead of phone, we can use a Pardot score instead. It's just a different field and you could use any other field that you want. So to make that change, let's start with our contact table, go to our default content here, and instead of phone, let's put Pardot score. And then in the text template for the table row, we'll wanna change this. So instead of this being the phone, we want this merge field to be for the score. Delete that, come back to resource, go to current item from loop, and I'm gonna search for score here. Here it is, PI underscore underscore score. Hit done, save, and let's debug this one more time. Now when we come back to the account, you can see that we do have a Pardot score for Wendy Kurtz. It's 50 in this case. Now that we've got our table, we can insert this as a merge field into an email template, or we can send a one-off email by clicking the email button on the right-hand side, selecting a merge field, 
and then choosing our rich text field that has our table in it. Click the eye to preview what it's going to look like, and this is how the table is going to be rendered. Now, one thing to note, you can see here in our preview that our collapse argument isn't being followed. It's being ignored, and that's why we see two sets of borders. You see we've got a border all the way around the table, and then we have separated borders for each of the cells. This sort of thing is going to take some trial and error and testing. Because again, if you're going to send this as an email, different email clients render HTML differently. So send it out to your different email clients, double check it on your phone and your desktop, see how it's coming across. And that's how you can use a flow to build out an HTML table that you could then insert into emails. Allison, I hope you found this video helpful. And for everybody else, if you'd like some more videos on flow, consider taking a look at our automation of the week playlist. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.